this episode is so invigorating to me. I'm so excited about it because as I have journeyed on being a better beginner, a newbie to a lot of things, um, and just really coming into more of myself, I am excited to share with you some of the same factors, some of the same things that I'm experiencing. And I want to give you the premise. I heard a sermon preached, well, not a sermon, but an interview of a pastor. And they said, God can't bless who you pretend to be. And in that aspect, they were speaking on you not being, you know, yourself or showing up in, you know, for a validation, outside validation, for not being honest about even the flaws that you may have. But this one, this message today that I'm sharing because of my personal evolution as of late, that God can't bless you pretend to be the what the Holy Spirit presented to me with that statement is who you've known yourself to be, who you've always desired to be, whether your environment didn't accommodate that or your family dynamic didn't accommodate that or your relationship right now that you're in, your marriage, your position at work, but the core you, like the person you really want to show up as but you've been shrinking or hiding in plain sight or pretending that you don't really desire wealth or marriage or children because it's not the norm in your circle or your family or your friend group and that's who i want to talk to if you see me then let's let's do this but I as a, have always seen my, I mean, I mean, my family, my kids, my, some of my friends. I even say, I'm bougie. I like nice things. I like quality. I have a standard. Um, not perfect or perfection or even pricey. I just have a standard and I enjoy nice things. I have a particular way about myself. And... I don't mind admitting that. When you look up the real definition of B-O-U-G-I-E, it is a standard. And we all should have a standard. Now, I don't know if you'll call yours bougie or not, but I'm okay with admitting that. But a standard. And that way of living, that way of thinking, of desiring certain things, who I was pretending to be was that humble, that, keeps you from really being who God desires for you to be. Because God has called you to walk in authority. He has given you power and dominion. And the particular type of humble I was, was keeping me from that. I was walking in my salvation. I was trusting God as my savior. He was, he is Lord of my life. He is my savior. But I wasn't walking in the power and authority and dominion that he gave me in the earth as a woman of God and faith that he has put me here to bring others along with. That warrior spirit that you need in order to win souls, in order to bring people to their full selves, whatever your assignment is, it won't always be peaches and rainbows and sunshine. <laughs> Sometimes you have to take a stance and demand or stand in your power against a particular system or a particular person or any type of adversities that may be met by a people that you're trying to support and or help. And when I started thinking about that, it's like I was pretending that I didn't desire this thing or that I wasn't entitled to have it. Not just deservedness, like it's my birthright, first of all, as a child of God, to have whatever God says I can have. It's not just stored up for me in heaven. He said, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm in the land of the living, so I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. However, 
who I was pretending to be was so other people who either were not experiencing the things I was experiencing, who were not um, going after the things I was going after, who didn't have the same ambition or who didn't have the same faith and maybe out of fear of their own dreams and desires coming to pass, whatever they may be, not just entrepreneurship, but anything in life, wanting more at all in any capacity and we're not pursuing it for whatever reasons and then projecting that onto me. And I, in turn was reflecting back that it was okay because I was like, I don't want them to think I f I'm better than them or I think that I, I'm doing something so great. And so I would talk down accomplishments. I would talk down my opportunities. I would talk down my income. I would talk down my connections. I would talk down my network like, oh yeah, um, we did such and such, but you know, yeah, it's just that's just what we do. And albeit that may be true that that's just what we do because I got those type of friends, it does, it does, it shouldn't be small because I don't serve a small God. I think sometimes we think winning people to Christ and being relatable and serving, we can meet people where they at without downplaying where God has brought us. And that's the pretending that I was doing. And that's what I don't want for you. I don't want you to shrink yourself in your, you know, your, you identify your desires and your values and then reflect truly what matters to you. And if that's what you're really doing in a God that is omnipotent, like he knows, sees, has, and is everything. So why would you pretend then to be small and minute and mundane and meek and, and small and shrink? Like, yeah, meek and humble by, I am a filthy rags, as the scripture says, but I am also a child of the king. And now that I have taken on that mantle and that identity in God, if I am the image of God, then I shouldn't be playing small and irrelevant and insignificant. There's a difference between meek and humble and being irrelevant and insignificant. I am not insignificant to God. I don't serve an insignificant God. So why would I pretend that I'm not significant, that I'm not of great value, that I'm not mightily and powerful in the God that in the power of the God that I serve? And pretending otherwise one, grieves the Holy Spirit, and two, f vexes God. He's like, wait a minute, you don't think I can handle this? You don't think, this is not ego. This is honoring and reverencing the God of all creation, of the world. Like God is my God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, who created everything, including me. He knows every hair on my head. He made the circulatory system that runs my body that I have nothing to do with. My role is to eat well and move my body to stay healthy, but I don't push any buttons or give any directives to my body to do anything. And that's the God that I serve. That's the power that's working on the inside of me to be everything that he called me to be. So pretending to be something that is not lining up with that word, that is the scripture. I am made in the image of God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God is all powerful. Like this is word. This is backed up by all Bible. And for me to downplay the gifts, the talents, the anointing, most of all, the fruits of the spirit, not perfection, because I got, he's still working on me. I got a lot of work to do. That's why I'm still breathing. He ain't done yet. But not apologizing for being blessed, not apologizing for that grace, not apologizing for his mercy, not apologizing for his blessings, not apologizing for his open doors, even his closed doors. All the glory that I'm giving God and then I go and pretend like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. 
oh yeah, it's just this. Oh, this old thing don't work. And, oh, it's nothing. You know, everybody does that. Everybody does not have favor dripping from them left and right or don't see it that way. Because God is no respecter of person. But when you honor him, when you have said and confessed with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is God and you are walking out that salvation, you cannot deny how incredible even some of the smallest things some days that make God just so big in that moment. I told my daughter the other day, for example, um, it would be nice if God sent this check Today, since the day it normally would come, was a Sunday. And immediately she texts me with a picture of her uh, informed delivery from the postal service that the check was in fact gonna be in the mail that day. And we were just, you know, joking and kikiing and laughing like, Lord, I sure wish that check would come today. But I, we, I was thinking probably the next day but it literally was in the mail. And it was the only mail that day. Now, I know you have what you say because that's biblical too. But God is so sovereign that he will just whisper and wink and drop those little tidbits to let you know, I'm listening. I hear you. I see you. I'm paying attention. I love you this much that I'm going to provide this thing for you. And then we will go and be small we will go and hide. We will go and deny the world, our greatness on, on the scale that God has given it to us. Oh, well, yeah, I'm going to write the book and put it out. But, you know, if people buy it, that's nice. Um, if people support me, that's great. No, God didn't give you this message for you to create something and then pretend like it's not here to serve people. That's like saying, oh yeah, we got the Bible and the word and God's favor and his mercy and his grace and his unconditional love. But you know, eh, I, I talk to him when I want to talk to him. If he do it, he do it. If he don't, he don't. And that's usually people's prayer. When it's deep down inside, you really saying, Lord, I need you to show up in a way that you have never shown up before. And if you don't ever do anything great, for me again. No, I want you to do it all. I want you to blow my mind. According to Ephesians 3.20, I want you to exceed abundantly, blow my mind based on how I'm executing the power that you put inside of me. That is Ephesians 3.20. I'm, I'm stuck on that. That's my thing. I know y'all have heard it a thousand times on the podcast and on YouTube. But it's my thing because when I got that and now that I'm getting this, like you're telling me I put all this in you and then you're going to downplay it like, oh, it's like, oh yeah, he cute, but it, he all right. Knowing he fine. <laughs> Knowing to you, he is everything. You know, it might not be nobody else's cup of tea, but to you, he's everything. To you, she's everything. Your house. Your apartment, your car, your grades, like to, oh, you ain't know, you know, yeah, I'm doing all right. No, I'm, I, God is blowing my mind. And I think we try to, you know, be so gracious in acknowledging what God is doing in our life so that we are not being egotistic or arrogant or whatever. And I, I used to have a problem with that fine line when God told me, head high, humble heart. My heart is humble. I serve, I love, I give in a way that God, that knows that I'm honoring God. But what God does for me, I'm not out here being braggadocious, but you said you make your boast in the Lord. If somebody asks, or if it's brought up, I'm not going to pretend that God is not being incredibly good to me. I'm no longer pretending that I don't enjoy the favor of God that I don't, that God is not continuously blowing my mind. I'm not making a lot of announcements this year. I'm just taking action. However, when it is brought to my attention or it is asked of me or it is being displayed or the fruit of my harvest is being laid out before my enemies or before anybody that's walking with me because anybody connected to me is going to win. 
I am no longer pretending to be someone who does not honor God with her full self. I want you to honor God with your full self. Your full self, every part of you, every facet that he has created, even the parts of you that he's still working on. Because nobody really can get free if we out here faking it. You can't save or serve anybody halfway or with a little bit when God has put, you know you have the answer. You know you have the word they need. You know you have the expertise they need. You know that you were built for the thing that God has put you in the center of. And then you'll back down or you won't play full out. You'll come in the room. You'll contribute if you're asked. You'll contribute if you're called on. You'll contribute because that's your assignment. But when you have a, 10 more answers to the questions or three more ideas that may top the idea of the person who's actually presenting, you won't speak up. You can't fake it no more. Like, don't just give all of your full effort. Don't fake it. It's not serving anybody, especially you and the people that are assigned to you. They are children, mothers, wives, husbands, babies, schools, organizations, corporations, families who need your knowledge, wisdom, expertise, skills, anointing, and your favor and faithfulness. It's not just about a dollar amount. It's not about getting paid all the time. It is about the fruit that God put in you that is to feed the people that he has assigned to you. Take your rightful place. Play your position and play it full out. Because God can't bless you pretend to be. The scripture says he will bless the works of your hands. But if your hands ain't doing nothing, what is he blessing? And I said this on a previous podcast. If you're only working at work the person or place you work for is reaping majority of that blessing not you yes you're getting the paycheck yes you're getting the promotion you're connecting with your co-workers who need to see your salvation and all those things but there is a work that is designed to specifically bless you and your legacy that has nothing to do with a job title or a career or a, a business. It is a seed that you're supposed to put in the earth that you were created for. If you happen to get paid for it, amen. But there is a thing that is innate only to you. It is your je ne sais quoi. And you need to get to doing it. You need to get to showing it off. Brag about your God by your actions. Not just lip service. I mean, talking about them is great. Where two or three are gathered in the midst, there am I. But brag about them. Show them off. Not just when it comes to a car or a house, but he woke you up. He gave you breath. You have the activity of your limbs. Your brain is fully functioning. All those things are blessings. And all those things make you capable of showing up 100% full out, full court press on who you are in God. So why would you pretend to be anything else or anything less? And let's talk about not being who your parents want you to be or who your spouse thinks you should be or who your friends have known you to always be when you have desired deep down to be something else or do something else or experience something else. Maybe it's not even about a job or work. Maybe it's that you just, your hobbies, you love to knit and you want everybody to have a sweater that you knitted for the winter, but you never do it because your friends will think it's lame or they, you know, I don't know if they'll appreciate it. Well, you'll never know if you never do it. The things that you love and that make you uniquely you, God put there for a reason. Somebody out there, even if it's a total stranger, needs what he has put inside of you. And if you keep pretending that it's irrelevant or it doesn't matter, 
somebody is going to leave here or you're going to leave here and that thing is going to be in the grave or God is going to have to assign it to somebody else, but it won't have your stamp on it. The harvest for your lineage may not get it because you decided to play small. So identify your own desires and values. What are they? Do you really want to keep doing what you're doing the way you're doing it? Do you really want to keep showing up as who you've been showing up as? Ask yourself that question. Set boundaries. It is okay to say no. You know, this is my favorite one. Say more no's to live a greater yes. I'm going to say it till I leave this earth. That is my motto for life. Say more no's to live a greater yes. Don't do things that don't align with your boundaries. Don't keep accepting mediocre if mediocre is not your standard. Don't keep doing the mundane if the mundane is not serving you. You want to be fulfilled in this life. You don't want to leave here with regrets of, man, if I had a just did this or if I had a said no here, I could have been able to do that. You want to live that out. It's not just about beach vacations and yachts and bags and shoes and trips and money and fancy cars. When you get ready to leave this world, those things will be irrelevant. How, you know, perfect attendance, all the accolades at work, um, things I used to think were important. I, I mean, they, tax, good stewardship, let's be clear, is a good thing. But when it becomes an idol and your need for validation, that's not a good idea. Then practice self-compassion. Be kind to yourself. You know, as you get to moving into this direction, you know, you don't have to make the big leap all at once. Just, you know, little by little, gradually move into, you know what? This is what I want to do today. This is how I want to show up today. This is how I'm going to show up from now on. This is how I'm going to serve myself while serving others. Because that is the true self-care. Like, it's more than a bowl bath. Y'all know I say that too. Self-care can be included in you serving others too. Because how you show up for yourself is 90% how you're going to show up for other people. You can't give what you ain't got. You just you just can't. You know, people think I can you know, love on people and not love on myself. You won't do it well. You just won't. You do it to the best of your ability, but it won't be as well as you think because you're not giving it to yourself. You not being filled back up. So that means you need to surround yourself with supportive people because other people need to pour into you too. You can't just be the only one pouring because eventually you're going to run dry or you're going to get to that muck and mire at the bottom of the well and it won't be any good for you or the people you're giving it to. So, you know, just gradually do it. And let go of guilt. Baby, survivor's remorse is real. I dealt with this. I mentioned this in um, a live I did some years ago. I thought my financial situation and, and ideology around money was only about the way my stepmother treated me and how she did things with money and her greed and selfishness and all that. But another big part of it, probably more than 50% of it now, if I'm honest, um, I hate to say that. I definitely, I'm honest. Um, <laughs> I'm said I'm taking that out of my vocabulary. But probably over 50% was I didn't want to do better than my mother did, my biological mother. Um, and I already was doing better than her. You know, for years, my mom was a welfare mom on assistance. And then the jobs my mom did have were like temp service. Not that anything is wrong with that. But my mother, I didn't see my mother working a job until I was an adult with my own kids. And they were like here and there jobs and things she could do, you know, for a couple of extra dollars here and there with different cleaning crews and things like that. Offices at night and stuff, but not a full career. And me having a full career um, and making well beyond what, a lot of people in my family had made um, at my aunts and uncles and my mother. So, and then just, you know, never touching drugs. Although my mother was a heroin addict. Like all the things that my mother did that I didn't do and all the things I did that I, my mother never did. I had survivor's remorse and guilt so bad 
And I had to let go of that and accept the decision to be myself and to live the life that God had promised me. My mother's choices were my mother's choices. My choices are my choices. And um, I'm benefiting from making some of those great decisions right now and have in the past. So let go of the guilt and then find your inner peace. Baby, the peace is unmatched. Your peace is unmatched. It is the most significant commodity in your life. Peace is priceless. You can't put a, a price tag on the peace, peace of mind, your heart being good with God, your full understanding of who you are, showing up authentically as yourself, being able to be present with you and anybody that you care for or are serving. It is the most gratifying thing I have ever experienced. And I have always had that, but I give myself the room to enjoy that, to be that, to sit in that space. Peace is, there's nothing that anybody will ever be able to tell me about the peace that I have, especially as of late. And the choices that I'm making every day, even though they may be very different from those around me or the people who are in my life who think that they're not sure, you know, if everything's going to be okay, do you have enough? It's, and I'm like, I have more than enough. Peace and favor? Peace and favor are game changers. Like your life is significantly leveled up when you invest in your inner peace. It's just, it's unmatched. And then out of all the things, to be able to have all those things I just previously mentioned, you have to trust the process. Because healing and being in your true self is not a destination, it's a journey. I mean, I'm 51 and I'm a freshman in college. And last year, I wasn't even on the radar of going to school or back to school or anything like that. But as you evolve as a person, your interests, your desires, your needs, your wants all shift and change. When your mindset changes and your heart posture changes, what you desire, what you see as valuable, what you warrant as important to you and significant for your life journey is different. And that's why you have to trust the process because as you become another person, as I'm going to say this again, and I've said it before, it's that thing in relationships when people go, oh, well, we just grew apart. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, you grow apart because of lack of communication. And the number one thing is listening. Be and sometimes you have to listen with your eyes. If they don't wear their hair a certain way anymore because they don't like wearing it that way, stop telling them you miss them wearing it that way. Maybe this is a new thing that they feel more confident wearing it the way they're wearing it. And embrace that change. If you start to work out and your spouse is not working out, mention how much you enjoy it and how much you would support them if they joined you. So that would be something maybe you share together or just let them know how much it's important it is to you. And then maybe they'll invite themselves to come on a journey with you. Once they start seeing your results and your energy change and your attitude change and your joy about working out and eating healthy and doing all these things. But growing apart is only because you don't communicate. Body language, listening, looking to see what is shifting. They're drawing away. They're getting quieter. Is, are they going into postpartum depression? Are they going into depression? Is it an anxiety that they now have developed because of a particular experience that you shared together? And maybe you're good after the experience, but they're not. And they're anxious about when that particular, when they get in the car again after an accident or when somebody is making repairs around the house because a main broke or blew, blew up or something. You have to pay attention. And trusting the process is that same thing. It is a journey. The journey looks a particular way because everybody is changing every day. It's something I said um, 
a share an emotional vocabulary wheel in one of my um, freebies. If you haven't signed up for my email list, you probably should at NicoleNelson.com. And it gives you a tool to communicate better based on your energy levels and the relationship you have with the person and then the full emotional vocabulary because I'm bringing that up because people say, I miss you. And they may be missing a version of you that no longer exists. And you not pretending anymore, they're going to miss a version of you that no longer exists. So instead of saying, I miss you, you could say, I really enjoy when we used to go hiking. Do you still hike? Do you still enjoy track and field? Do you still enjoy chess? Um, not just, I miss you. Use the full extent of your vocabulary and say, do you get excited about A, B, and C? Are you still surprised when X, Y, and Z happens? Say the full word and emotional express, not just I miss you or I love you because I love you becomes a checked box. And sometimes we can say it and mean it sincerely, but sometimes depending on the mood or the energy or the moment where you're saying I love you or someone is hearing I love you, they need a little bit more. They need to actually hear you say, I value you. They need to actually hear you say, I appreciate you. And you need to say it. Sometimes it's not just hearing it. Sometimes we're the culprit of the person who's not ever saying it. You're not ever saying I miss you. You're not ever saying I love you because you don't express yourself that way. But if you're in a communication with another person on this here earth, meaning children, spouse, co-worker, boss, lover, friend, brother, sister, mama, daddy, aunt, uncle, cousin, guess what? You have somebody who you need to use your full emotional vocabulary with. Because if you're no longer pretending so God can bless you, then you are going to be expressing yourself and showing people how you are changing. And they may miss a version of you that no longer exists. So you definitely want to give them what they can do to support you on this new journey and the process that you're trusting and they can go along with you. So all of that, don't pretend so God can bless who you authentically show up as. Show up as your full self and put full court press on the awesomeness that God has put inside of you. And boast about him being this big God in your life that has done all these great things. Because you are worth it. And God says so and I believe it too. And until next time, love well.